Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel and in this video we're going to fix the exhaust manifold of the David Brown but it could be any other type of exhaust manifold. I was driving under some trees and I didn't notice a low hanging branch and before I knew it the muffler got caught onto the branch and it snapped the exhaust manifold. And that's what happened, it just snapped off and that's where it broke. Now. I noticed that it's been welded once before so we're going to try to weld these pieces back together and the problem is that this is die cast so that might be a little bit more complicated than welding normal steel. So the first thing we're going to do is actually try to find out what type of die cast it is. Now I'm a little bit lucky on this tractor because there is what I call an insert on top of the exhaust manifold so this is the one that I actually have already pre-loosened up and be ready to remove it. So I can remove this piece and then start welding it separately without having to take off the complete exhaust manifold. I'm going to prepare those pieces to weld them back together and um, I'm not sure yet what it is. I suspect it's gray die cast because that's typically what you would find on an exhaust manifold. There's also something called ductile that's a bit more flexible and it won't snap that fast and then you have two other types which is white die, cast, white die cast and malleable die cast but those last two are less common so I really suspect that this one will be a uh, gray die cast but we'll do the test in a few minutes but first of all let me go and clean these parts up so we have a good view on what has been done to it before because I do see already some welding before so the same problem has happened with the previous owner. So let me blast it. So I cleaned up the part and I could see now that it's been welded before. So I'm going to try to weld this piece back on there. But before I can weld it, I need to figure out what kind of die cast it is. So is it gray or ductile? And the method to find out what kind of die cast it is, is actually by using a punch. So I'm going to use a punch and try to chip off a piece. And then I'm going to look at the impact area. And if there's a rim or an edge on it, then I know it is ductile. Uh, if there's no edge or rim and it's just a scratch, then more or less you are sure that it's actually gray uh, cast iron. Now both look gray, but the gray doesn't mean anything about uh, which type it is. So the color doesn't mean anything. So let us try that and then we'll see what the result is. Let's see. So I'm going to use my punch and make a little dent here and see what the result is. And I feel almost no edge or rim on it. So this is almost certain to be gray die cast. Another method to find out what type of die cast it is, is actually using a drill and try to drill a little hole and look what comes out of it. You can see that all the little parts here are really fragmented and you get no spirals like you would normally have on steel. So that really confirms to me that this is actually gray die cast. If you try to do the same thing on ductile, Then you see these longer curls and uh, some of them fell in between. Let me see if I can grab it. So here you actually see um, the different parts. And you actually see how that is curled here, this kind of spiral. That's typically for ductile. So now that I know what type of die cast I have, which is gray die cast, I'm going to weld it with a suitable electrode. And I'm going to do stick welding. And for that one, I have a couple of electrodes here. Uh, with nickel inside that are really suitable for welding this kind of die cast. Um, I'm going to use a stick welder as I said and I'm going to use it in DC plus mode so basically my ground will be the positive side because electricity flows from the negative side which is going to be the electrode onto the piece. Uh, so let's see um, how this goes. I don't know because I've seen that it's been welded before so I don't know what that is but we'll find that out very soon. Now one of the issues we're having with this is that 
I can't continuously weld because it may actually crack. So ideally you would have to warm this piece up and that's what I'm going to do with a burner. I'm going to heat up the piece while I'm welding and I think that's uh, very important that the piece is warm and then I'm going to let it slowly cool down. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, maybe I'm unlucky, maybe I am lucky. We'll find out very soon. So let me set everything up and then we'll start. So the piece is about ready to be welded and we still have to heat it up. But first of all, I'm going to attach my positive ground to it because I'm going to weld with DC direct current, probably around 60 to 80 amps. I don't know yet exactly, we'll see. Um, so let me hook up the welder. So I've got the ground clamp on the plus side and I'm going to connect the welding electrode actually to the negative side. So now I'm going to warm up the piece so I can actually weld it. I'm going to check the temperature. I might need a little bit more. It's around 250 degrees centigrade right now. I got quite some decent heat right now around 300 degrees centigrade so I think that's gonna work. Uh, probably I should get more to about 4 to 500 but let's give it a try. So I have it tagged in place, so now I can weld this other side. Alright, so the weld looks reasonably alright, so now I'm going to let it cool down. And I'm still going to leave a little bit of gas flowing through it, but minimal so it can cool at ease. So I'm going to let it sit here for a few minutes and then I'm going to remove even the flame a bit more from it. So at the end, uh, it's going to cool down nicely so it doesn't crack. I don't think it's going to be a big issue. I could also put it in a bucket of sand. Maybe that might be the better option uh, so we can let it cool down slowly. So I'm going to take the piece that we just welded and I'm going to place it in the bucket here and then I'm going to put some extra sand on top of it so it can actually cool down very slowly. And then, there we go, so now it can cool without cracking. So now that should be cooled down, yep, and it is. So here it is. Um, doesn't look that pretty, but it seems to be all right. Um, so let me clean it up. It doesn't look too bad. It's not perfect, but it's quite all right, I think. So let's clean it. So I think all by all, the end result isn't too bad. It's not a real pretty well, but it's it fixed it quite all right. So I'm quite happy with that and that will be good enough for the exhaust. Um, I did weld it actually with nickel uh, iron rods uh, or electrodes specifically for gray um, cast iron. So now we can put it all back together and first of all I'm going to put a new seal up and then there it is. Now you can buy this part new it's going to cost you around 70 euros but I think this one is now fixed pretty well and we'll see how good it holds but I think it's quite all right. It was welded before so um, I think we will be all right. So let me bolt this down and then uh, we put the muffler back on and see how it goes. All right so that's looking quite good and tight and here is the muffler. I already have it repainted a bit and now that should fit fine and I can actually lock it in place. And that's 
uh, pretty good. So I think that is actually fixed now. So we're nearing the end of this video and as you have seen I was able to re-weld and repair the die cast part. This was grey die cast, uh, we checked it out, then we cleaned it and then we welded it. Uh, welding wasn't all that smooth but at the end it worked reasonably well. Uh, I did use a iron nickel rod specifically for welding grey cast iron and I did use a stick welder. I placed it on DC and the positive side was actually on the metal part itself so the electrode was the negative side. It worked pretty well I have to say and now I have it assembled and we actually put a new seal up and everything is now just working fine. Um, by this I, I saved myself about 70 to 80 euros because that's the price of the part if you buy a new part like this. Thank you for viewing and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.